Hi there. This is a pre recorded video presentation about the University of Chicago's Department of Pathology and specifically its residency program. This is a resource that's being recorded in advance of our upcoming remote interview season for the fall of 2020. This is a presentation that's normally given by residents during the interview day. So we figured we would go ahead and make this available to people in advance of or during their interview uh, experience uh, to be reviewed at their convenience. Uh, my name is Timothy Carl. I'm one of the two chief residents at the University of Chicago, and uh, I will be your uh, guide through this very brief presentation. Uh, I've been at UFC for three, going on three and a half years now, and I absolutely love being here. And I hope that some of the uh, passion that I have for this program will uh, will uh, will rub off on you by the end of this video. Uh, if at, by the end of the video you have any questions or concerns or want to reach out to me, I'll include my contact information as well. So just as an overview for where we are located, of course, the University of Chicago is in the great city of Chicago. Uh, here it is right here. This is the downtown. This is, of course, Lake Michigan. I uh, hope you can see my cursor here. Where the University of Chicago is located is a few neighborhoods south in a neighborhood known as Hyde Park, uh, kind of bounded here. And you can see that the university itself stands out very distinctly. This is the entire University of Chicago campus. Actually, it goes a little more off to the right-hand side here. But the medical center in particular is located on the southwest part of the campus, right next to Washington Park, and then this is the Midway Plaisance. Uh, the direct patient care setting, or the direct patient care buildings uh, are these ones here, and they basically approximate an L with the medical center and, or sorry, the uh, medical school and a lot of the research centers uh, compromising this area here. Uh, this can be a little hard to read, so let's go to a map. This is a top-down layout, and I guess we'll go through the quick layout from uh, newest to oldest building. So this here is the Center for Care and Discovery. It's the newest building, uh, and it houses all of the OR, well, not all of the OR suites, but most of the OR suites. Uh, most are all of the ICUs, and has a lot of procedural suites as well. So that's where our gross, lab, uh, gross pathology lab is located. It's also where our blood bank is located, so it can be close to the ORs as well as to the trauma center, which is actually located across here in the, in the actually at the ground level of the medical campus parking B building. Uh, the next building going south is the Duchesswa Center for Advanced Medicine, or DCAM for short because it's a mouthful. Uh, this is mostly an outpatient center for uh, specialty care. Uh, a lot of outpatient clinics take place here. Uh, in addition to that, we also have our blood donor center as well as the IV therapy infusion suite where our apheresis center is based. So those are the two areas that you'd be interacting with uh, as a pathology resident here. Uh, we have two parking lots or two parking garages, of which one is A and one is B. Most residents park in the A one. It's cheaper. It's a little bit lower traffic. Um, then going across to here, uh, this is the Comer Children's Hospital. Uh, it is a I forget how many beds it is. It's one of the small. It's a small, uh, smallish children's hospital. Uh, what we interact with mostly there, besides when you're on blood bank and you're doing phoresis procedures in the children's hospital, is that in the basement of the children's hospital is where our newly constructed morgue is located. Uh, it just went live uh, in the spring of 2020. I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, let's see, if you go across the across 58th here, uh, and by the way, all these buildings are connected by skywalks as well as underground tunnels. So uh, I'm sure those of you who haven't lived in Chicago will nevertheless have heard about the, you know, very cold and miserable uh, Midwestern winters, but I think you'll find that they don't really slow us down uh, on the campus. Uh, so anyways, the Mitchell Hospital is, uh, is a building that has a few low acuity inpatient uh, wards, but what's most significant for us is that the sub-basement houses most of the clinical laboratories. Directly attached to Mitchell is the very expansive Billings Hospital, uh, which is home to mostly research laboratories, but also the anatomic pathology department, as well as histology, our sign-out rooms, and our old and historic morgue. To help you put some names to faces here, this is a departmental photograph that we take every year, or at least we did before COVID struck. The gentleman in the center in the suit is uh, Dr. Dan Arbor. He is our chairman. Uh, he came to us in, I believe, early 2017. Directly to his right, our left, is Tom Krause, who is the director of the anatomic pathology services here. Sorry about that. That was an epic prompt. And then further over to the right, I can point out to you Dr. Cami Hendrickson, our primary program director, as well as across from her, Dr. 
Anthony or Tony Chang, uh, one of our assistant program directors, as well as Vera Tesich, our other program directors. Uh, we have three program directors that kind of come, uh, that sort of share the responsibilities of the role and uh, allow them a lot of different perspectives into both AP and CP as they come from different backgrounds. For residency tracks at the University of Chicago, we actually have a lot of different offerings. Of course, we have the combined AP and CP four-year curriculum, as well as three-year AP or CP-only curriculums. In addition to those, we have a relatively newly debuted physician scientist track option, which allows for up to two years of additional salary support for post-residency research. We currently have two residents currently pursuing this track. One thing that I really like about the University of Chicago's curriculum is that it's actually very flexible. You have the option of doing any of these tracks, but not only that, uh, you also have the option of switching at any point essentially during your time here. Let's say you come in as an APCP resident and you find that you just adore AP and don't want anything to do with anything other than looking in the slide. Well, you have the option of dropping CP and it's really no, no concern. Well, let's say conversely, you come in as an AP only resident, but then you hear about my experiences on the blood bank and you really, really want to go into CP or at least you want to add it on. That's also an option. As long as you identify it relatively early during your training, uh, we do everything we can to try to make sure that our trainees' desires with respect to their future careers are met. Now, Assuming you follow a typical APCP curriculum, this is what you might expect from your first couple of years. This is an example of uh, an older schedule back from when I was a second year. Uh, you'll notice that the way we arrange things is in a pretty traditional fashion. There's no AP or CP block years. You do both AP and CP every year and you rotate across many different services, often returning to some later in time. As a first year though, most of your time will be spent in the sort of bread and butter AP services. You'll spend five to six months on surgical pathology as the learning curve is greatest there. You'll do one to two months of autopsy, specifically under the guidance of a senior resident. You might do another month of another AP rotation like renal or derm path, or maybe you'll do some CP like molecular cytogenetics. We also will do, this is not actually correct, one to one and a half months of coagulation during your time here at U of C. During the second year, you move into the more complex services like hematopathology, cytopathology, and blood banking. These are generally reserved for second years who have learned the workflow you see a little bit better. But if you have a specific interest in these, uh, we can certainly accommodate those and try to get you exposed to them as early as possible. So what is a typical day like on surgical pathology? It varies so much between programs, so I want to take a minute or two to explain how our system works. We're not on a, like a multi-day cycle where you have grossing days and then preview days and then sign out days. No, every, we're on a one-day cycle. Specimens come in, you have a gross assignment every day, except for Mondays. Uh, you, preview, you preview and you sign out every day. As far as when you preview and when you sign out, it's essentially as the cases come out and as you coordinate with your attendings. One of the other strengths about this program, I think, is the relatively thin divide between the attendings and the trainees, especially on surgical pathology. The way that I usually communicate with my attendings when I want to sign out for the day is I just send them a text message and I tell them, hey, I've got three endometrial biopsies and an ECC and like a fibroid uterus. When do you want me to sign out? And we go from there. We play things by ear. Uh, it's very nice and it kind of, it, it's very, it's very pleasant being able to interact with your attending in such an informal fashion. They treat you uh, well and reasonably and they recognize that you have many other responsibilities. All those responsibilities is your daily grossing expectation. And the amount that you have to gross here, I think is pretty moderate. Uh, you have to gross, generally speaking, two bigs per day. Now, what is a big? A big is an organ resection. Usually these are done for cancers, but I know it's a very heterogeneous category because this could range from, you know, little small skin excisions or your hemithyroid with singular nodules to large pelvic debulking. So your grossing responsibility might vary. One day it may be as little as one hour and one day it may be as much as four. But generally speaking, I think we grow some moderate amount at the University of Chicago. The way search path is structured is that there are six residents on at a given time and they rotate across six different services. There's the breast service, there's head and neck as well as bone and soft tissue, which are combined into one, the gynae service, GU, which is combined with the relatively low volume thoracic service, GI, as well as the gross room resident or the triage resident. 
the triage resident's responsibility is to evaluate specimens fresh as they come in from the ORs, to take critical measurements and photographs when the tissue sh when, when they should be taken as the tissue is fresh, as well as to uh, be responsible for frozen sections as they come into the department. So how is our didactic lecture curriculum structured? Every day, Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. is a reserved time for teaching. And the subject varies depending on the day. AP lectures generally take place on Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, we've just implemented a new organ system based uh, bl uh, block based curriculum, which might often feature didactics for an organ system on Monday, followed by a group unknown slide session on Thursday, though this isn't always the case. In addition, Tuesday mornings are reserved for an autopsy conference, which is resident run. The CP curriculum is actually uh, very strictly defined and is on a two year repeating cycle. Uh, it's split across the Wednesday morning didactics, as well as a portion of our Tuesday sort of mid-morning uh, 11 a.m. Limrock conferences. Now, Limrock is essentially what our, uh, our, call, uh, our call system is. Limrock stands for Laboratory Medicine Resident on Call. And the resident who is on Limrock over a given uh, week, starting from uh, Monday of one week to the following Monday, uh, is responsible for uh, being the sort of point of contact for all the all the clinical labs with respect to things like critical values uh, for clinician queries uh, and also on the weekend for things like the blood bank service. In addition to that, the CP curriculum also features this summer lab management curriculum, which is also on a two-year repeating cycle. That's led by Dr. Jerry Yeo, one of our chemistry attendings. So, then finally on Fridays is a fairly low uh, low key teaching session, which is led by our peers, usually our fellows, but also sometimes uh, we'll do uh, slide round tables with just the residents. Uh, they're usually very fun sessions and I find them often to be the most educational of all. At the University of Chicago, we have a lot of different international opportunities. Uh, in particular, one of our uh, breast and cytopathologists, Dr. Mueller, he leads a couple of uh, uh, medical mission trips where he travels with some ENT surgeons as they go to Kenya and Uganda and I think there are some other sites where he'll usually bring along a resident uh, to do essentially all of their pathology by cyto. Uh, many of the hospitals that he'll go to don't actually have frozen section uh, equipment available so they do all of their pathology uh, by uh, touch preps. One of our residents recently did an away rotation over in France where she spent time at the medical examiners in Paris. Uh, I myself have spent away rotations at other sites, including at the NIH in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Really, if you're able to coordinate any sort of away rotations, uh, the department will support you in your efforts to go there. In addition, the faculty here tend to be very well connected and can arrange for many such opportunities for you. This is not specific to the University of Chicago, but if you come to the city of Chicago and learn pathology here, uh, you should get to know these different groups and opportunities here, because these are basically regional pathology societies. There's the Illinois Registry of Anatomic Pathology, or IRAP, that's a sort of a monthly to bi-monthly uh, sharing of cases with different conferences hosted by each of the regional academic pathology programs. There's the Chicago Pathology Society, which includes uh, sort of regular Monday night lectures. These are directed at people at all levels, both in the community and in academics. And then the University of Chicago in particular hosts the Saturday Slide Club. They sort of once every one to two month educational session for all audiences where you can come to the U of C and learn from our faculty. Obviously, attendance at the Saturday Slide Club is free for our trainees. We also have quarterly meetings with both our chairman, Dr. Arbor, our program directors, as well as our program coordinator. Besides giving us a chance to eat for free, it gives us a lot of uh, opportunities to interface directly with program leadership, as well as departmental leadership, about the any questions or concerns or issues that we may encounter as residents. Uh, this is a relatively new development, and I think it's been very well received. We do really feel like the program listens to us. There are a plethora of different fellowships available at the University of Chicago. The Surgical Pathology Fellowships are, of course, the non-ACGME accredited. And there are a total of seven different positions available, actually eight because we take two GI and hepatic fellows now. The ACGME accredited fellowships uh, are as follows. There's a blood bank fellowship, which I'm currently fulfilling. Uh, there is one to two clinical chemistry positions, a cytopath fellowship, an HLA and transplant immunology fellowship, which is two years. We now have two hematopathology fellowship programs opening. This is the first year that we've had two. 
as well as a my medical microbiology and at least one, if not two, molecular fellowship positions available. Let's talk about some of the fringe benefits at UFC. When you come to the University of Chicago as a resident, you're going to be given your own desk. It's, it's a cubicle, but nevertheless, it's your own desk and it's potentially your space to be permanently yours for as long as you stay at the University of Chicago or until you decide to move to a nicer desk by a window. You, everyone will have their own microscopes. They're all at least Olympus BX4, DX40s or DX41s. You'll have laptops provided by the university. They're pretty normal Dell laptops. They're fine. They get the job done. We also have an annual book fund of about $1,300, which you're allowed to use towards basically anything you can justify in the name of, uh, of education, whether that's books, whether that's equipment that helps you do your job, whether that is travel expenses to go and present at conferences, though you will not always have to pay for your conferences, as we'll soon discuss. Of course, we also have a large library of communal textbooks available, and all residents are given access to Expert Path, which if you're not familiar, it's a publication put out by Elsevier, which basically is a digitized version of all of their diagnostic pathology textbooks. We have a few different options for health insurance. Most people take the U. CHP, that's the University of Chicago Health Plan, which basically is comprehensive for all service and care rendered at the University of Chicago. We have many other options available too. Uh, for sick day and vacation, you get about four weeks of the latter and about five days of the former. Um, this is pretty loosely tracked. Uh, the University of Chicago campus has a lot of nice amenities as well. There's a couple of uh, on-campus gyms which are extremely inexpensive for how nice they are. And then parking is also remarkably inexpensive for you know being in the city of Chicago. So uh, this is also taken pre-tax, by the way. There are also many child care opportunities available, uh, both on the medical campus and on the campus more broadly, but uh, I will have to defer further comment on that, not having a child myself. For at least one conference per year, the department will pay cover all of your expenses to uh, travel and present. Uh, this includes your airfare, your hotel, uh, I think it's up to $100 per day for meals, as well as your registration, and even courses at the conferences. It's a very nice setup so long as you're actually presenting something there. Um, officially, it's only one per year, but uh, that sometimes can be flexible. In addition, there's a in addition to that, as you might expect at the University of Chicago, there's a real wealth of additional research funding available to trainees. There's the Robin Elizabeth Whistler Fellowship, which a couple of our residents have won in the past. There's the Human Tissue Resource Center, which is essentially a central histology lab, which is dedicated towards cutting and providing tissue for research purposes. And of course, residents have the option to take educational recuts on any case that they're interested in. This is my favorite slide because I get to gush about the city that I love so much. Uh, I'm someone who moved to the city of Chicago just when I came here for residency and since then I've really fallen in love with the city. It is a real American metropolis with a lot of character and a lot of diversity to it. It's a large city. It's more than 5 million people in the greater Chicagoland area, but we're, they're all divided into extremely heterogeneous and diverse neighborhoods, each with different looks and feels and architectures and food and drink scenes. We have far too many museums, way too many parks and beaches lining the entire lakefront. Uh, it's a really gorgeous place and I really love being here and I think you will too. We of course have a, a very good uh, public transit system. Uh, I think that if you come here and you don't live in Hyde Park, actually maybe even if you do, I may still recommend that you bring a car just because it is relatively convenient and you know, outside of rush hour, it's a relatively drivable city. But even if you don't, you'll be fine because of the quality of the rail and the bus systems here. Uh, it's a pretty affordable city too. We are in the Midwest, uh, so the cost of living is really not that high for a major metropolitan center. Um, a lot of this doesn't really apply right now with COVID, but you know we have amazing food scenes, we have great music and theater, and uh, there, there's, there's really something for everybody here. We also have, if you care about sports, which I don't, we have a lot of championship winning teams in every sport. <laughs> And during the summers and winters as well, uh, there are all sorts of outdoor activities, street festivals, et cetera, that really keep us well entertained. Again, not so much right now. And the people in the city are actually just extremely nice. I am so struck by how, despite being in a major city, how nice the people are here and how generally friendly they are. So where do people live around the city? 
Well, within Chicago, there's many, many different neighborhoods. We can very roughly divide them into north side and south side neighborhoods. I'd say about a third of residents live in or immediately around Hyde Park, either in Hyde Park itself or in Woodlawn. Uh, other residents live in other neighborhoods closer to downtown. There's South Loop where I live. One resident lives in Pilsen. And some people live off further out on the north side. Uh, some residents also uh, have families, have children, they live out in suburbs, whether the southwest suburbs of Chicago or even down in the northwest Indiana. Uh, everyone's commute is within this, actually I think all of the residents and fellows that I'm aware of, their commute's definitely less than an hour, and mine in particular being in South Loop and reverse commuting is less than 15 minutes. If you live in Hyde Park, your commute might be as little as, you know, five or ten minutes depending on whether you walk or drive. Okay, some fun photographs for you. I, when I interviewed at the University of Chicago, the thing that I appreciated the most was the sort of social dynamic that I saw in the residents as well as between the residents and the attendings. I think that people really enjoy working together and people really like each other here. And I say that as earnestly as I can. Uh, so to give you some insight into, into uh, regular days on our service, in the top left here, this is when Dr. Cammie Henriksen just a year or two ago took the helm of the program department, uh, succeeding Dr. Alia Hussein, who is, of course, still on service with us as a primary thoracic pathologist. Over here we have our, well, actually recently graduated PGY4 class now. This is back when they were second years and they just finished presenting their cases at the local IRAP conference. I'm sure the relief is palpable for them. In the bottom left, this is your heme path sign out. You spend, heme, you spend three months in heme path down in the sub-basement uh, and you really do get to bond with the heme, uh, hematopathologists down there. Uh, these is our, this is our current I guess it'd be our current PGY2 class on the first day of moving here. On Halloween, it's kind of tradition that a lot of people dress up. This is uh, one of our GU and setup pathologists, uh, Dr. Antich. Oh, one other fun little thing here is that, uh, so our old morgue, it doesn't really apply anymore, but our old morgue uh, was actually featured in a famous Hollywood movie. Uh, if you've ever seen the Harrison Ford movie, The Fugitive, uh, this is a scene they filmed in our morgue, and you might notice the similarities between this movie then and this morgue now. Of course, we moved into a new space, which is kind of nice. Oh, a lot of nice other social opportunities on campus. I, I miss this very much. Uh, there's a campus bar in the basement of the Ida Noyes Hall, which is a student, uh, sort of just like a student union center. Uh, and the bar is limited to uh, students and faculty of the University of Chicago campus. So it's, just, it's a real tradition on Friday nights when we finish all of our work that we all head to the pub afterwards. Uh, obviously, it's been closed down now for COVID, but our hope is that it will be back soon and we will be there making a strong showing. Uh, up here, this is uh, Jimmy's pub it's also a local uh, bar in uh, in Hyde Park which is uh, nearly if not equally as cherished and one thing you might notice in these photographs is that it's not just trainees coming out to hang out together so these uh, these two people right here these are two of our PAs uh, that come out and uh, socialize with us as well this is Alexis and this is Corey Nash who if those of you uh, who are active on Twitter will know is at I play with organs uh, he puts really great gross pathology tutorials out there. But in addition to that, our attendings will actually come with us to the bars oftentimes as well. In fact, I think in this photograph at Jimmy's, there's more attendings here than trainees. It's also very nice when they cover the tab. Some other social opportunities. Uh, we have wel resident welcome events. This is a few years ago. I, I organized a rock climbing event at our climbing gym downtown. Uh, we also had brunch afterwards in the same building. Uh, let's see. I wasn't present at this event, but a lot of our trainees went to a monster truck rally out in Rosemont. Uh, I wasn't, didn't seem like my kind of uh, gig, but they seemed to really enjoy it greatly. So I, maybe I need to reconsider. Uh, this is a, a lot of members of our now PGY2 class going out to the Navy Pier to enjoy the fireworks, which uh, until recently have been a very regular thing. Uh, there's lots of different races around the city. We have a few athletes in our department that participate in these. Uh, this is Charlene. She's our, one of our senior PAs now turned AP manager. Uh, and this is also the current PGY2 class when I welcomed them in by uh, inviting them over to my place and serving them drinks. Uh, we also are very well represented at a lot of different conferences. Uh, probably the main one that we present most frequently that would be the USCAP conference, which I think these photos are a mixture of the presentation of the uh, conference in Vancouver and maybe in the one recently at National Harbor. Uh, we have a lot of great opportunities to present at conferences, and again, we really support trainees in their attempts to uh, present there. And just a few more social photographs. I think I'll let them uh, speak for themselves. 
Okay, so if you have any other questions about the University of Chicago, and I'm sure you probably have many, uh, please bring them up during your interviews with each of the program directors. But in addition, feel free to reach out to us, follow us on Twitter at, at UChicagoPath. Uh, I would also recommend following Corey Nash, who's one of the uh, most prolific and active uh, uh, users within our community. And then feel free to give me a follow as well. I'm uh, at Tim, uh, sorry, I should say at T-I-M-C-A-R-L-L. -L. Thanks for listening. I uh, hope this is helpful.